Final round of the URC and there's still so much to be decided. My name is Mark, let's talk rugby. Okay, so we are back on URC duty this week after all the excitement of the Champions Cup. And, you know, I've got my rant, my Lenser rant out of my system as well. So we're back to the usual kind of format with the video as well. But before we get into that, I would like to just say a huge thank you to everyone who's interacted on that video and, you know, on the, the final video as well and recent videos too. There's been a bit of a swell in terms of people posting comments, interacting and that kind of stuff. And it's been very enjoyable for me to chat with you guys down in the comments and it is noticeably helping the channel to grow as well. So I'm very grateful for that and hopefully it's going to continue as well. You know, I, you know, whatever happens, I'm still an idiot who likes rugby talking about it on the internet, but at least you guys mean that, it, you know, I'm not speaking to an empty room as it were. I'd still do it if I was, but you know, it, it makes it just feel a little bit more special for me knowing you know, that we, we can have a de really good discussion down in the comments and stuff after videos as well. That's something that now I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, especially in kind of recent times with, with more people down there and all the regulars down there as well. You, you guys have been brilliant from day one too. Okay, so we're going to get into the final round of the URC. So still got so many teams who can, you know, get, get into the playoffs or who are looking for, you know, to improve their position within those playoffs, etc. So I'm going to start with, you know, one of those games and, and the reason why I'm wearing my Connacht jerseys because Connacht have a tall order really and potentially this is the last time I could get to wear my Connacht jersey this season. Uh, so I decided, well, if that's the case, we're going to put it on for, for the preview and, you know, as a Leinster fan, I'm not going to say I'm wishing Connacht make the, the playoffs, let's put it that way. Um, but I do hope that uh, whatever happens in this game or whatever happens this season, that Connacht can be a little bit more consistent next season. I think, you know, um, it's very hard to measure the progress, really, you know, other than obviously where they, where they finish the season. But during the season, they're so up and down, up and down, that you don't know kind of, you know, within a you know a batch of, of games of fixtures whether they've improved or not over that time or not you you basically have to look at the longer term with them so there's no kind of trends with them and hopefully next year you know that new team there the coaching team you, you know will will uh, get things going their way a little bit more hopefully they'll, they'll recruit smartly as well in the off season and we're going to see Connacht coming back stronger next year. But, you know, this one is Friday, May the 31st. It's a 7.35 kickoff, kickoff. It's Leinster versus Connacht. It's third versus 10th. It's in the RDS Arena. It's on Premier Sports and TG Car for your view, viewing pleasure. And also on your CTV, which again, anyone, you know, maybe this, I don't know whether they do deals for like, later on in the year or whatever, but if they do, if you don't have another way to watch the URC, um, definitely look out for one of those deals. If they don't do that, then for next season, if you don't have a way to watch your, the URC, you know, on your um, you, on your TV or whatever, your, your sports package that you have, I would highly recommend getting the package, the season package for URC TV, because if you like rugby, you know, even half as much as I do, or you, or you watch half as so many games as I do, you're still going to get huge value out, out of your subscription for that as well. So that's something I'd highly recommend. I'm not sponsored by them. I'd love to be sponsored by somebody. Um, I, you know, but that's like pipe dreams. <laughs> uh, maybe when it, maybe in like 20 years time, uh, <laughs> I might get a sponsor, but, um, yeah, I just think it's it's honestly a really good value where, you know, a lot of sports packages, I remember paying pretty much, well, maybe not as much, but close to, or, or maybe more if you add in other stuff, actually, the same amount for just my TV subscription um, as I do 
for like every month as you do for a season long um you know subscription for your ctv and people will say oh but you get so much more with your tv yeah i get so much more that i don't want to watch uh, so i'm i'm very happy with that anyway let's get back to what we're supposed to be talking about so Lancer versus connacht um you know with with these two connacht still have an outside chance of making the playoffs and you know pretty much they need a bonus point win and we look at why that is when we look at the um look at the table later on but uh leinster in third place the top four when we look at the table later on you'll see that the top four can can finish in any order so leinster could finish fourth they could finish first or anywhere in between uh but you know they'll be obviously gunning for a win here they want the bonus point win to give them the best chance of finishing as high up that table as they can and you know for them as well it's a chance to kind of put that champions cup final defeat behind them and you know maybe have a positive end to the season and for me that means picking a strong team for this game it doesn't mean letting the guys who 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 played on Saturday have a rest I from my point of view the time for resting should be done like there's only potentially for Leinster two games left in the season you know there's this one and then we're their first knockout game they're the only two guaranteed games they have left this season so if players honestly need to be rested with only two potential games left um uh, you know that, there's something wrong with that system you know, for me, I don't know. I don't know what what I know, I can understand the reason why player workload has to be managed, etc., throughout a season. But I don't understand when you get to the sharp end of the season, like why isn't a why why isn't a planned? Here's my why why didn't I include this in my rant last night, right? But why isn't a planned? And it's not just about Leinster, it's about other teams as well. Um, but why is not planned so that that work that like workload that you they know they have to manage the players why is it not kind of loaded so that they can have those players playing at the sharp end of the season for me again it might be kind of old school stuff but i feel like at this time of the season you play your best team every week if somebody gets injured they get injured they're out somebody else get a, gets a chance that's how you know squads should work that's why lens have like a bajillion players in the squad from my point of view is that early on in the season you give the other lads a go you know the ireland internationals to go off for the six nations or wherever the the autumn internationals etc right and then they get managed throughout that period but then you get into the sharp end of the season you go okay this is my best 23 they're playing this week okay these two or three guys got injured well you three have performed the best this season you're you know you're next on uh on the rank to to slot in those positions so those three guys get a go then maybe somebody else gets injured they're out and then maybe one of the other guys comes back etc right for me that's the way i think it should be is that you know i want to see a lancer team that are battle hardened um by playing week in week out and being used to that you know being used to be being called upon to say Right, you did well last week, but now you got to go to the well again, and potentially got to go to the well again after that, and after that, and you have to be up for it, right? Uh, so anyway, I just hope that Lancer pick a strong team. I know Connacht will pick um, their strongest team because for them this is do or die, and you know Leinster potentially are vulnerable at this stage as well. Obviously, Leinster could also hand hand them a hiding in a kind of a you know. Um, they're having their cathartic moment by by getting it all out of their system as well um but yeah i think it's going to be an interesting one we're going to have a look at the form you know even though lens are having great recently certainly better form than than connacht but lens are only four wins from the last seven and you don't say that very often about lens and only one win from the last four um in this competition so like of the last um six games i guess if you include the champions cup uh final and semi-final they've only won two um, which is not brilliant um if you're leinster connacht have won three of their of their last four 
uh, or seven, three of the last seven and two of the last four. So in terms of the form, they're fairly close to each other, you know, and we still don't know which Leinster team is going to get picked. Is it the URC team? Is it the first team, etc.? Is it the send the guys who are left out of that down to South Africa um, team? We, we don't know at this stage. Uh, so, but we do know it's going to be a strong Connacht team. But still, honestly, I, th- I think that Leinster, they may not go like full strength, but I, I think, you know, it's going to have to be a uh, still a very good side that gets picked. So I, I'm thinking it has to be at least the side that would start in the, in the URC like normally, plus maybe, you know, a handful or, or more of the players that played in the Champions Cup final as well. So you're talking about probably the entire bench from the Champions Cup final plus, you know, another four or five from that and then guys coming in from the rest of the squad. That I think would be uh, at least a, a very strong team in terms of what normally gets picked in the URC. And, but at this stage, you know, in terms of picking this one, I'm going to go for a Leinster win and a Leinster win with a bonus point as well. I think Connacht will get in for a few scores and maybe they'll make Leinster sweat a little bit early on. But uh, I think this is one, given what happened on Saturday, that Leinster are absolutely going to target to win and go into those playoffs on a more positive note from them. Okay, so that's our first game. On to then the next game, which is also a Friday night game. And that is Glasgow Warriors versus Zebra Palmer. So this is 4th versus 16th. And this one is on Premier Sport and also uh, your CTV. It's a 7.35 kickoff. So kicking off at the same time as Leinster versus Connacht. And, you know, it's Glasgow who have been right up there, you know, at the sharp end of the table for most of the season. They, like, Glasgow were top of the league. Um, again, we talk about Leinster dropping in. Glasgow were top of the league. They knocked Leinster off top spot. And now they're in fourth place. And that's how much things are changing. And you got Zebra at the moment rooted to the table. And honestly, you know, your last game of the season for Zebra, you don't want to be going to the Warriors who are chasing to finish in top spot, you know, especially given that Zebra don't travel as well uh, as Benetton do either. So, you know, this one, we'll have a look at the form. And, you know, Glasgow, they've won five of the last seven. They have, those two losses, though, have been in the last two games. Zebra, they've lost their last seven. They've lost their last, you know, how many until we go back to that one win that they had earlier on, on in the season. Um, so not much hope, really, for a Zebra win on this one. And therefore, I'm, I'm back I'm back in Glasgow not just to win, they're going to win with a bonus point and it's going to be pretty comfortable for them, I think. Um, and even that bonus point may not even be enough for them, depending on how other results go, to even move up from fourth place. That's just how um, things are. Like, you know, all of these teams are, are vying for those positions. And, you know, at this stage, looking at, you know, the team you want to avoid really, uh, well, two teams I would say you want to avoid is one is the Stormers and the other one is Ulster because Ulster suddenly, you know, are actually looking decent again. Um, so Glasgow really would want to try and finish in those top two for, you know, quote unquote, an easier um, path through the the uh, quarterfinals of the playoffs. But yeah, I'm going for a Glasgow win in that one. On to then our next one, onto the Saturday game. So Early game, it's a 12.45 kickoff and it's the Stormers versus the Lions. So this one is 5th versus ninth. It's a um, you know 12.45 kickoff, so early off in the morning. Um, it's at the DHL Stadium and it's on Premier Sports. And, you know, both teams looking for something out of this. The Stormers, you know, they know that they, they can't really progress further up the table uh, because like they're you know six points behind Glasgow and they can score a million tries and they're not getting six points out of a game so fifth is as high as they can finish but they could um you know potentially 
um, finish down in eighth place, right? So they don't want that to happen. They don't want Ulster to leapfrog them either. So they're going to be going all out for this. But then the Lions are currently in ninth place, just inside those playoff places. And given that they have the same amount of points as, as Edinburgh and Benetton who play each other, they pretty much know that if they win this game, uh, you know, they're going to qualify for the uh, the playoffs. So that's going to be a big thing for for them in terms of motivation as well. So maybe that motivation to make the playoffs is going to be higher than the Stormers' motivation just to keep their position because the Stormers, like everyone down to Ulster in sixth place, already know they're in the playoffs. So the fact that you're going to be in the playoffs if you lose anyway. Like, no no team obviously is thinking about, oh, well, it's okay if we lose. But there's still that kind of maybe, you know, uh, in the back of the mind relaxation in terms of just your, your absolute sharp focus that might happen to the Stormers. Whereas the Lions will be laser focused on the fact that they need a win out of, out of this one to make the playoffs. And... You know, it's hard, honestly, to, to pick this one. And when we look at the at the form as well, you can see the form for both teams is fairly good. Like Stormers, five of the last seven, they've won three on the bounce. The Lions then, five of the last seven, they've won two on the bounce. So both teams in, you know, really good form. The Lions, or sorry, the Stormers have that home advantage. The Lions, I think, have that advantage of just that extra bit of focus, I think, on the result themselves where the stormers maybe you know could just take their eye off the ball a little bit and, and be thinking about who their potential opponents are in the you know quarterfinals etc and you know f- for me it's all about you just win the game first and then whoever you play you play right um and i think the stormers in fairness and when they get in knockout stages it doesn't seem like, like they actually once they're there at least that they don't care too much about who they're playing they, they fancy themselves and knockout rugby and the right to, to do that because you know they made the final for the last two seasons and who's to say they're not going to make it this year as well but in this game it's hard to pick and, and i'm probably going to change my mind a million times uh before this game is actually done and dusted but i'm going to go for the lions to to win this one and for them to nick that spot. And it means everyone below them then is pretty much, you know, out of luck, I think, in, in terms of um, qualifying for the, at least above the Lions, because they could potentially, uh, well, actually, no, if the Lions win, then anyone below them um, is out of the reckoning. Yeah, so, but I'm going for Lions win and whatever happens, happens with everything else. Okay, so on to the next game then. We have the the game that makes things a little bit complicated for um, other teams, but for these two teams, it makes it very simple. So it's Benetton versus Edinburgh. This is a one o'clock kickoff. It's at the uh, Stadio Monigo. It's eight versus seventh, and for these two teams, it's very easy. Win the game, you qualify. If you lose, then it gets complicated, right? Um, lose with a bonus point, good chance of of still. Um, qualifying but th- the thing for these guys is that they're going to be playing you know and there's going to be like 15 minutes left because the other the game before them kicks off 15 minutes before right and they'll they'll know in terms of with 15 minutes to go or somebody will know in the camp at least what's happened in that stores lines game you know who's won and then at that stage then um uh, it could be a case that you know um uh, both teams you know if one team gets a losing bonus point then that's enough to qualify or whatever or even just uh you know there's potential there for a team to to lose and not get any points out of the game and still have to wait on results um from i think it would be the ospreys one right they have to wait until ospreys played or something to see if they qualified as well but it's gonna i think it's gonna be an interesting one where when we get to that point in the game if the lines at the stormers lines result actually has some kind of knock-on impact on this game here what actually happens in the game then will it g like teams on you know if if 
if uh, you know the the result from that one means that the loser is less likely to to make it through. So like basically, if the Lions win, right, then um, you know the team that loses this is is going to be out because they're not going to be able to match the Lions uh, points tally. So that could be interesting to see how that affects the you know the willingness for teams to just go all out for the win and rather than maybe holding on to a potential losing bonus point or whatever it may be you know not not trying to get too ambitious and then lose by more than that you know seven points and then not get any of the game so i think that's going to be kind of an interesting dynamic in the game um so on form then we have Benison have won three of their last seven. So the form compared to the rest of the season isn't great, but it's still not terrible. Edinburgh then have picked up a little bit and they're four out of seven. Before last week, they had won three on the bounce as well. So they've got to be feeling, you know, um, fairly confident themselves going into this game. You know, Benison, you would normally fancy them at home, but I think Edinburgh going into this knowing that basically it's a winner it's not a winner take take all but it's it's a winner you know gets the big prize the winner definitely qualifies for the the knockout stages and also you know you have to think about because of the sharks winning the um challenge cup it means that you know finishing eighth place is isn't as good as maybe it would have been it had they lost because eight place would have got you not just playoff but also champions cup whereas now you have to finish seventh or above for champions cup so again these two teams you know if the lions win will one of the teams then start chasing you know not just a win but a bonus point win and potentially actually you know over commit a little bit and end up losing the game and losing out on the playoffs and you know potential champions cup as well so interesting dynamics i think in in, in this game uh but gotta pick a winner i'm gonna go this is another one where like i'm, I'm thinking i'm going you know it's gonna be benson it's gonna be edinburgh it's gonna so i'm gonna go for benson just because of home advantage edinburgh i think you know recently have looked the better of the two teams but i think benson at home final uh home game of potentially at least of the season and you know want to give a good send off to what what has been an excellent season for them as well if they've ri- they've ridden so high in the league they don't want to then go from being right up there you know in the top two in the league to suddenly uh or not suddenly but you know um ultimately not making the playoffs and not making champions cup rugby next year as well so i'm going to go for a benetton win in that one on to then our next game which is the three o'clock kickoff and this is scarlet versus dragons it's at the Cardiff city stadium and it's 14th versus 15th this one again is on premier sport so 14th versus 15th and there isn't that much really in terms of you know to play for between them like the scarlets now um you know they they can't be they can't be caught by the dragons they can catch the sharks um but i don't think the sharks now that the sharks have their champions cup rugby you know um i think their last game anyway is just going to be a celebration just a trophy parade um for them and they're not going to worry too much about you know where they finish in the league but for scarlets at least you know climbing up out of out of that little group at the bottom maybe would be a good thing dragons really um they'll they'll already know by this stage whether there's any chance that 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 zebra are going to over overtake them they shouldn't they shouldn't have any chance at all given you know the fact that they're going to um they're going to glasgow and you know (laughs) probably going to get beaten up there so dragons not that much to play for either so it's good I, I want to see in this one I want I want to still see both teams having a good go because it's gonna be the last, you know, run out before next season and, and you still want to end the season on a high. 
and you want to have good memories going into the off season and you know then just something again to build on for next season so that they you know they can be the, the team that kind of goes, goes up there and and hopefully not replaces Ospreys but competes alongside Ospreys up there with the rest of the league I'd love to see all of the all of the Welsh teams competing next year I don't think it's going to happen but you know there's potential for um, some of the teams to compete next year like Scarlet's can be great in small small parts of a game you just can't you know very rarely at least put a decent performance over an entire game together so that's something to work on but um, in terms of the form so Scarlet's have won Two of the last seven. Dragons one of the last seven. Scarlet's won last time out. Ending in a run of four defeats. Dragons at the moment are, are on a run of four defeats on the bounce. But I think it's going to be five for them to end the season. I think Scarlet's are going to win that one. And you know we're going to see some decent rugby from the Dragons. Because again the Scarlet's find it very hard to control a game from start to finish so I expect the Dragons are going to have some purple patches and maybe this could be one where both teams actually get to try bonus point out of the game as well okay so next then we have that trophy parade Sharks versus the Bulls so this is a 3-10 kickoff it's 13 versus second and it's at Kings Park and this one is on Premier Sport again so you know the obviously the rest of the top four and we'll be hoping that it's not just a trophy parade from the Sharks, that they actually, you know, um, will put in the performance against the Bulls and kind of, you know, show the home crowd what, what they're made of and then make it easier for the, the rest of the top four to potentially leapfrog the Bulls or stay ahead of the Bulls um, in that scramble for, you know, home advantage. But... I would worry about, you know, having won the final and the fact that the Sharks, there really is nothing for them to, to play for, you know, other than pride. And pride can sometimes be, um, you know, a big motivator for a team. But after, the, the thing is, pride generally kicks into play after you've been, like, humiliated, right? When you, you just get your pants pulled down, you get, get a bit of a, a smack on the ass right whereas the sharks have just won something um so it's not it's not going to be that type of pride you know it's not going to be that type of you know we'll show you what you were made of we're not as bad as everybody thinks the world is against us kind of pride it's more the well we'd rather not lose you know uh our, the game where, where we're celebrating this uh momentous occasion the first South african team to win a you know uh european trophy and being able to parade that around you'd obviously rather be, be parading the trophy around after the final whistle having just won the game rather than having come come on the back of a loss so you know but you know given the fact that the bulls have that motivation of currently we're second in the league there's a chance to finish top of the league we do not want to finish you know third or fourth in the league therefore we're going to give this everything and we're going to try and catch the sharks you know uh maybe a little bit of a hangover from the celebrations or whatever and uh get get a win from that so we look at the form and then we make a prediction so sharks Form picked up a little bit towards the end of the season. Three from the last seven is better than you know most of the periods um, for them during the season. Lost the last two in the league. Bulls, they've won five of the last seven. So, you know, other than, um, you know, I think Munster, um, there's, there's no other teams that have won, won more than five of their last seven games. Um, there are a few teams though who are on five out of seven, but it shows you know decent form from the Bulls. Three wins on the bounce as well, and prediction wise, I think the Bulls are going to make a four on the bounce because I do think that the Sharks uh, were ever about not wanting to lose after winning the winning the you know the Challenge Cup and parading around the trophy. Are they really going? To, honestly, like obviously. <laughs> You do care whether you win or lose, right? So I'm not saying it in that that sense, but do they really care 
in terms of like when that final whistle goes and wherever the score is and the Sharks get to parade that trophy around, fans are still going to be happy, right? Um, guys are going to be out there. They're going to be signing autographs. They're going to be pulling kids out of the uh, crowd and giving them their boots or their shirts or wherever, right, just to make the next um, viral TikTok or wherever. Um, but, yeah, I think it's going to be a huge celebration for the Sharks, but I think the Bulls are the ones who are going to be doing the work on the field and coming out with the win in that one. Okay, so next one then is Munster versus Ulster, a big um, Irish derby. It's at 5.15 kickoff. It's first versus sixth, and this one is in Thoman Park. It's on Premier Sport and RTE. So, you know, in Ireland, you can watch it free to wear as well, which is brilliant because I think, like, you looking at it maybe, you know, uh, looking at this fixture maybe a month ago, you probably thought, well, like, Ulster are going to just get absolutely destroyed in that one because Munster coming into form and Ulster are just all over the place. And even with new uh, coach in there, they didn't seem to be kind of, you know, finding any kind of cohesion but Ulster are starting to look good now Munster have just come into amazing form at the right part of the season and you know it's credit to the coaching team at Munster they they did it last year and it looks like they're doing it this year as well finding that form and hitting top gear right when you need it um, in the season in the URC and I could see them you know go all the way to the final and defend their, their title again this year um, but I think this one is going to be a close game because as I said Ulster are looking decent they have a bit of confidence back there's a bit of a pep in their step as well uh, so they'll go to Munster not with that kind of doom and gloom cloud that was hanging over them you know for months uh, that's lifted now they've got a chance now to go there to potentially get you know a famous win at Thoman Park as well and set themselves up nicely for the uh, first round of the playoffs. Both of these teams have qualified, um, but there's still a lot of pride between them. And this pride, you know, will be slightly different from the Sharks simply be because they both have, you know, something to play for. Munster wants to stay top of the log. Ulster, if at all possible, want to move up to fifth and they don't want to drop down below sixth. Um, so because there's something riding on it for both teams, I think therefore you, you're going to get um, a closer contest. But if we look at the form book, like Munster now seven on the trot, you know, and Ulster five out of seven, four on the trot. So Ulster are not in bad form going to Thoman Park, but Munster are just in out of this world form. And I talked about them like maybe three or four rounds ago, how they were like that kind of, you know, uh, the kind of dog that Leinster uh, missed, and somebody mentioned it on the comments, that was a very good comment on, on the video uh, today, that, you know, Munster playing that final in that situation would have had a better chance of winning there, right, you know, in the last few minutes and maybe into extra time than Leinster, simply because they have that dog in them and they have that ability just to scrap and to, you know, by hook or by crew, crook, uh, get themselves to the win and that's how they were playing maybe three or four weeks ago um, you know weren't in amazing form in terms of their performances but they were winning the games now their performances have come along as well so they've got that already that you know huge uh, you know doggedness about them and now they're, they're looking for my money the team in the best form in the entire league at the minute as well in terms of the way they're actually playing the game their attack looks very fluid defense looks decent set piece is good the forward seem up for the fight as well and because of that i can only see a monster win in this one i think also will give them a game but monster will have that little bit of an edge to be able to, to pull out the win in the end i think okay so final game of the Weekend, the final game of the regular season as well. It's a 5.30 kickoff. This is um, Cardiff versus Ospreys. It's 12th versus 11th, and it's at Cardiff City Stadium. And, you know, although there's one spot between them, Ospreys has definitely been the better team this season. Cardiff, 
we talked about before. Young team, they look decent at the start of the season. They're starting to come into a little bit of form again now, but they had a, a big um, period in the middle of the season where they kind of lost their way. So it's good to see them kind of, you know, rediscovering that a little bit they did make changes in order to uh, you know stimulate that as well so it's good that the wider squad squad is getting involved and actually you know being positive for the environment around the camp as well but let's have a look at the form book for these guys so cardiff they got that win last time after making those changes and but that's their only win in the last seven Ospreys have won three of the last seven they won last time out as well um so one of these teams is going to finish with two wins on the trot in the league and given the fact that well it kind of it kind of depends i guess because by this stage obviously ospreys will know if that very slim outside chance to have of making um the playoffs would actually materialize for them or not um and if if it's a case where they're out, uh, then the motivation again to, to get the win maybe won't be there as much. But I still do think, you know, whatever happens, Ospreys, they're going to want to finish the season well. And even though Cardiff have hit that little bit of form, I think Ospreys have definitely been the more consistent, the most consistent Welsh team throughout the league. And I expect them to win, to finish with a win there as well. So we'll have a quick look at the table too. Um, and, and some, I'm not going to go through all the mathematical permutations. Um, I'm sure somebody's going to do that. Uh, but I don't want to, um, you know, off, off the top of my head, try and figure it all out, um, in the, you know, in the few minutes that we have left in the video so top of the log is Munster there and they're on 63 points any of the the top four teams could potentially um, pop up there above them if they lose against uh, Ulster if they beat Ulster they're they're top of the league it doesn't matter whether it's a four or five point win and um, you know the Bulls two points back uh, with, with Munster getting to 67 or 68 the, the Bulls, the highest they can finish on the 66. So Munster know um, basically what they need to do in that game. If they win the top of the log, very easy mathematics for that. If they lose, then, you know, um, they're just sweating on, on other results, basically, you know, and um, potentially they could finish down in fourth place. Next then is the Bulls in second place on 61. Um, you know, for them to, you know, got to win the game, obviously. Um, if they do that, they probably are going to finish in second place, and then they've got to hope for a monster loss for them to actually finish top of the log. But like the others, they can finish anywhere in those top four spots. Leinster, um, you you would think they're targeting a bonus point win against um, Connacht, and then superior points difference. Um, but it's going to be close actually between them and the Bulls. But I think. Um, you know, actually the Bulls have a much better points difference. So, you know, unless Leinster absolutely destroy Connacht, then, um, you know, I think the Bulls are probably going to still stick in that spot. Um, if, if the Bulls got, say, just a win and Leinster got a bonus point win. So, you know, um, Leinster would have to ha hand out a bit of a hiding to Connacht. They certainly are capable of doing that. Um, but it's, it's a tough ask for them you know, um, given what's happened to them this week. But the, the I guess the scenario for them is is for either the Bulls or Munster to lose and then for Leinster to get their win and, and get in into that top two. Um, you know, finishing top of the log is an outside chance for them. Um, but given who's playing who, you know, in terms of who Munster and Bull, the Bulls are playing, um, I think maybe third place is, is where where they're potentially going to end up. Um, I think second or third at the moment for them. Uh, then Glasgow on the same amount of points, um, but they're a little bit back on the points difference. They are playing Zebra though, so it means that there is a chance for them th themselves. And, you know, they're they're playing at the same time as Leinster as well. So I'm expecting both of those teams to get bonus point wins um and then 
Glasgow then have to think, well, can we score, um, you know, 25 points more uh, or win by 25 points more than Leinster win by it is kind of their thinking, you know. Um, so that's going to be an interesting one there, I think, for, for the Warriors. But yeah, that top four basically can finish almost in any order. But, you know, um, probably... I'm thinking just on the results that are there, it's gonna it's probably gonna be Munster top. The Bulls and Leinster could be either way around, and then uh I think Glasgow come come de- down in fourth then. Um that's just the way I feel at the minute. Next thing we have the Stormers in fifth place on fifty four points. So for them it's about protecting what they have at the minute, which means beating the lines and if they do that, um they're probably gonna stay where they are because Ulster are not making up, um, you know, whatever it is, 82 points um, difference between between those. So um, I think the, the Stormers looking for that win. Um, if they lose, potentially, you know, depending on how things go, could finish as low as eight, but they can't finish outside of the playoffs. In sixth place, then we have Ulster, similar position for them, you know, more than likely trying to keep their spot rather than move up or down. Um, Playing monster though, which means makes them vulnerable to the to teams below them, and maybe you know looking for uh, getting something out of the game, maybe bonus points or something out of that game to to keep that position there. Next time we have Edinburgh in seventh place, and they're on forty nine points, but importantly they are on eleven wins, um, which means that for them, any of the teams below them that finish on the same amount of points. Uh, match point system Edinburgh will automatically finish ahead of because of the games that they've won um, so if Edinburgh um, win their game they're basically you know they're going to finish at least seven that, that means um, that they're going to qualify for Champions Cup next year so that's a huge you know um, incentive for them to, to win that game against Benetton Benetton if they win um then they go on the same amount of wins as Edinburgh and then the dynamic changes. But obviously if they win anyway, they're going to leapfrog Edinburgh, whatever happens, right? Um, but going on to 11 wins then puts them in a point where they could potentially finish ahead of Ulster and ahead of the Stormers as well. So that is an interesting dynamic for them. And the same for Edinburgh as well. Edinburgh go on to 12 wins and if the Stormers and Ulster lost, then they would finish up in fifth place, which would be huge for them. But yeah, those two teams in in that game there, um, you know, basically whoever wins is guaranteed to finish in the playoffs. Uh, more than likely as well to actually uh, finish in the Champions Cup places too. And then the loser is looking down at the likes of the Lions, uh, Connacht and Ospreys and hoping, you know, that things go their way. So ninth place then we have the Lions on 49 uh, match points and nine wins so a win would only take them to the same amount of wins as Benetton and not Edinburgh so if they finished on the same amount of points as Edinburgh they wouldn't be able to leapfrog them you, you know because uh, points difference won't matter it's wins first whereas Benetton if Benetton um, you know well they can't really finish on the same amount of points as Benetton and on the same amount of wins because they would both have to win the game right for the to stay on the same amount of points so the for them the whole win thing is more to do with um you know uh, the teams below them really trying to trying to fight off one of them um because again they can't get more wins in Edinburgh and they they can't um finish on the same amount of wins as Benetton and not be not be above them right so so it doesn't matter so much for them i guess uh, in t- in terms of those teams but for them the target is beat the stormers and if they beat the stormers they know they pretty much know they've qualified because either like Edinburgh or Benetton are going to lose that game and the maximum amount of points from a loss they're going to get is two. So try bonus point and losing bonus point up to 51 points. Lions win the game, they go to 53. So 
they would finish in lowest then with a win. They'd finish lowest eighth in the league. So that would be enough for playoffs, but not for Champions League. So that's where, you know, going for that bonus point potentially to leapfrog the winner of that um, Edinburgh Benetton game um, would come in. So they are hoping, you know, that, that the winner of the Edinburgh Benetton game doesn't win with a bonus point, And then they have that chance against the Stormers to potentially leapfrog them and get into Champions Cup. Okay, so next then below then we have Connacht. So Connacht, um, given what what we talked about, Edinburgh Benetton, Connacht now um, they can qualify potentially as an outsider for the um, for the playoffs in eighth spot, but they can't get any higher than eighth. Um, because of that game between Edinburgh and Benetton. So it means the Champions Cup next year um, is gone for Connacht, as far as I understand it, because uh, I can't see a scenario where they're going to finish seventh if um, you know Edinburgh and Benetton are guaranteed that one of them is going to be on uh, 53 points, or like even if it's a draw, one of them is going to be on 51 points, which is out of Connacht's reach. So Connacht, they're only thing they're worried about is can they finish eight and qualify for the the playoffs it's a long um, shot for them basically they got to beat Leinster um, and probably beat Leinster with a bonus point as well um, and then you know hope that the Lions lose against the Stormers and hope that the loser of that Edinburgh Benetton game uh, doesn't pick up too much from the game. Basically, it's nothing out of the game, and Connacht then can leapfrog them um, into eighth place. So that's the the scenario for them. And for the Ospreys in eleventh place, also won forty five points. It's pretty much exactly the same thing. That Champions Cup is gone, um, but there is that chance to still finish in eighth place either with a win, a bonus point win. And then other results going their way as well. Twelfth, then we have Cardiff, um, who, at this stage, you know they can't move up. Um, the Sharks potentially could retake that spot um, and leap back over them. Um, but I, I, you know, I think that Cardiff are probably going to stay where they are. Um, with, with, you know, whether whether it's you know. Um, with a win against the Ospreys or, or losing bonus point or whatever. Um, but it, I think I just have a feeling that the, the, the Sharks, you know, they're going to lose their game and therefore uh, Cardiff won't really have to worry about uh, being being passed. And then we have the Sharks in 13th place who have qualified for the Champions Cup and they know, um, at least I hope they know, that performances next year have to be better because otherwise they're going to be like Cardiff in this year's um, Champions Cup where they're just pool fodder. But the Sharks' um, team has shown in the second half of the season that they're certainly better than their entire season at, you know, and their place in, in the league would actually say and the fact that they lifted a trophy as well. But um, they're probably going to, you know, they could finish as high as 12th and as low as 14th but I think they're probably going to um, you know it's either going to be 13th or 14th honestly I think um, just because it's going to be a big celebration for them Scarlet's then um, in 14th spot there the fact that they're playing the Dragons means that it's very likely on 22 points that they you know they will have a chance to leapfrog the Sharks and they probably will into 13th place Dragons then um, they're in 15th with 16 points. Um, we'll know by the time they play whether they're going to um, potentially finish bottom or not. You know, if Zebra lose on Friday and don't get anything out of the game, well, the Dragons know that that the you know they're going to finish in 15th. Whatever happens, they can't at that stage. They won't be able to catch the Scarlets and they won't be able to drop below Zebra either. Zebra then at the bottom there, and honestly, that's probably where they're going to finish, which is. You know, um, it's it's going to be another wooden spoon for them. They are on fifteen points, more than likely. Uh, but this season has been more positive than than other seasons. Like they got a win, 
um, which is brilliant. And they also got a draw as well. And they pushed a lot of teams close. And they're getting much more competitive at home as well. We've seen it season on season. They haven't made that transition to take the form on the road the way Benetton have yet. But we can see that they're taking steps forward and they're moving forward. And the warning signs are there for the likes of the Dragons and the Scarlets that Zebra are not going to be, you know, um, the team propping up the table for too much longer. And if you don't, if you don't want to be that team, you now have to improve as well and, and get yourself uh, further up the pack because Zembre are basically coming for you. Um, is basically what I read into how Zembre performed this year. But that's a look ahead to the final round of the URC. Some really exciting games going on there. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, which teams in this final round really go for it, which teams are deciding that actually no, we're, we're happy with, you know, whatever comes out, we're actually going to maybe rest a few players before the, the knockout stages, you know, and how that impacts um, everyone else as well in the league. But that is a look ahead on that. Um, let me know how you think things are going to go. And maybe even, you know, uh, if somebody wants to have a go on it, um, post down in the comments what you think your, um, you know, likely quarterfinal lineup is going to be in terms of, of the matchups you know, uh, given who you think is going to finish first to eight, etc. Um, I think that would be interesting to see and see if anybody um, gets anywhere close to, to that as well, given how how um, malleable things are at the minute. But that's the end of that one, and I hope to see you guys on the next one at the weekend.